What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. The S&P has officially entered bear market territory. The definition of a bear market is the S&P 500 losing 20% from recent highs. Right now is definitely a time where a recession seems inevitable at this point. I want to talk about the different things that you can and should do right now to get yourself prepared for a recession. Let's get into the video. Everyone has been seeing and feeling the effects of a recession coming here in America. Gas prices are at all-time highs with gas recently going above five dollars a gallon. Food expenses are increasing heavily all across the board from dining to grocery stores, so on and so forth. The Fed continues to raise interest rates at a staggering pace to try to calm down rampant inflation. And the housing industry continues to show signs of slowing down. Uh, not so much in terms of home values, but definitely in terms of new housing starts, new construction, mortgage loan applications. Investors are very cautious and I would even say weary right now and that is why they call it a bear market. A bear hibernates and that is exactly what we're seeing right now with many retail investors throughout the market as folks park cash on the sidelines to try to deal with and assess inflation. Inflation continues to hover above 8% and it's very important to understand that the way that inflation was measured has changed over the years. And if we were to go back and we were to take a look at what inflation would have looked like, had we compared it to, let's say, the recession that we had in the 1980s, you would see that the way that it is calculated now versus the way that it was calculated before is significantly different. If we were still calculating inflation the old way that we used to calculate it, inflation would actually realistically be double what it is right now. So you have to wonder if the government and the Fed is just playing some sort of a game with us as if we all cannot figure out what is really going on. I want to be sure that everyone goes into this eyes wide open and has the best possible shot to be able to come out unscathed through what seems like an inevitable recession at this point. We mentioned several different things that are clear indications of an incoming recession. Number one, the bear market. Number two, over 8% staggering inflation for several months in a row and the government seemingly inability to call it what it is. Uh, they called it transitory for the longest time, acting as if it was just a summer rainstorm that was just rolling through the area. But it's very clear at this point, because literally all year, uh, we've seen major warning signs from slowing GDP growth, from rising interest rates, from increasing consumer costs, by way of baby formula shortages, fuel shortages, grocery shortages, housing supply shortages, supply demand problems, supply chain problems, the list goes on and on and on. The clearest indication that we have recently is the rampant layoffs that are running through the economy right now. That is definitely something that we all should be aware of at this point. We have seen, especially in the tech sector, we have seen stock sell off and we have seen significant layoffs be announced throughout many companies. Carvana plans to cut 2,500 jobs. Mortgage company Better.com announced layoffs of 4,000 people. Peloton, the home fitness company, they saw a huge boom during the pandemic in 2022 they have lost around 50 billion in market cap and as a result or have announced substantial layoffs as they continue to downgrade their revenue 
projections. Now there are others that it's less clear how many will be laid off. For example, Robinhood, the investing app startup that went public in record timing is announcing layoffs. Wells Fargo, one of the largest banks in the world, has announced layoffs and again has been unclear in terms of how many positions they plan to let go, but that is a large bank and a very well capitalized bank. So again, the the common theme that we're seeing here is companies are aggressively changing guidance around revenue. A lot of this started last month and that again causes a, a really major question in terms of what we have been hearing from the media and what we have been hearing from the government in regards to we've we've heard statements like the economy is in great shape and that the, the government plans to make it a top priority to control inflation however none of those things are coming true and companies again are downgrading and revising revenue estimates and have been for over a month now. It's very important that we as consumers recognize that we cannot trust conventional media. It's well documented that they all have agendas and quite frankly we are the ones who stand to lose by trusting them. So this video is a to make you aware of the ongoing spin cycle that happens through government and media and instead to refocus everyone on controlling what we can control which is what we do specifically to be able to combat these problems from the four walls of our home and with our families and that is what I want to encourage everyone to do here. Don't panic. Don't go crazy selling stocks. Uh, now is not the time to get stupid with your money. Now is the time to formulate a plan and a strategy to be able to deal with the ongoing downgrading of stocks, the ongoing increase in prices throughout the economy, and the message here is for us all to control what we can control because that is what's going to get us out on the other side of this thing safely and securely finances intact that being said let's talk about seven ways that you can control what you can control and you can recession proof your finances starting right now number one and we talked about it over and over and over so Guys, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but hear me out. Have an emergency fund. As valuations continue to downtick and the bears continue to retreat the stock market, it is imperative to have cash on the sidelines. Now, you, you hear people constantly talking about cash is trash and so on and so forth, and that makes a lot of sense in a bull market where valuations are going up and companies are growing but when investors are retreating when businesses are downgrading their profits when they're downgrading their revenue estimates and in a world where the government seems to not be shooting us straight it is critically important not to over save but to save an amount that will sustain you should any of these layoffs or should any of these continuing inflation costs rising have a negative impact on our ability to be able to pay our bills and to feed our family. The way that I recommend doing this and what has worked for clients that I've worked with in the past has been to first set aside one month's worth of your bills in a starter emergency fund, then grow that to three months and then on to six months of monthly expenses stashed away in a savings account. Now, will some of that money lose its value? Absolutely it will as inflation continues to eat away, but here's the thing. Should you or your wife face a layoff, you will be in the clear. You will have the ability to be able to sustain your family throughout very tricky market conditions, and that peace of mind and that safety net 
is more important in a recession than it is in any other time. So number one, let's get that emergency fund in place. Number two, live within your means. The Fed sent out a lot of stimulus money. Things were very affordable and we were at record low unemployment going into the COVID-19 pandemic. And with that being said, that created substantial lifestyle gains for the average American in the middle class uh, and the lower class in particular. It created more ability to be able to live a better quality of life. So right now, those savings are being dwindled away. We are seeing credit card balances increasing. We are seeing savings balances decreasing. And these are signs that folks are not adjusting to the new reality of high interest rates, high inflation, high housing prices, high food prices, and so on and so forth. The message here is to create a budget and stick to that budget and review that budget with your significant other every single month so that you know that you are progressing as a family towards your goals. Number three, create a side hustle or an additional income stream. There are significant ways, or I should say there are a lot of different ways to create a side hustle. And now is a great time to get working on building up that side hustle while you continue to rely on your stable source of income in your household. So if you start building up now and you're able to either build a client list or you're able to build a foundation with which you can grow a side hustle, now is a great time to do that because we do not know when these recessionary forces are gonna stop. So creating additional sources of income right now is a fantastic idea and it will pay dividends for you later on as this recession continues to tighten its grip on the economy and our wallets. Number four, invest for the long term. Just six months ago, we saw record levels in the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Dow Jones. We've said it over and over and over again, and the statistics prove out consistently that time in the market beats timing the market, yet folks continue to want to time the market. So for those individuals, I would say, again, Time in the market beats timing the market. Now there is going to be an opportunity and there already is an opportunity to dollar cost average your investments into the market right now to potentially increase your returns and investing at a sustainable rate based on having your emergency fund, your spending, your budgeting and those things in order. It is critical to go ahead and to get invested and to be dollar cost averaging your way into the market. You don't have to throw your whole nest egg into it right at this moment. It would be better to dollar cost average it uh, going in little by little by little because we're not going to be able to effectively or I should say accurately time the market low. So it is better to dollar cost average into the market and invest for the long term. Buy things like mutual funds or index funds that historically are high quality and bear out a track record and a history of winning during a recession. Number five, be real about your risk tolerance. Now is a time where it is important to know your risk tolerance. You should not be investing in speculative investments if this is a time where you feel risk averse. Now this is up to you and your family to be on the same page about. So please have this conversation with your significant other and make sure that you guys as a team go into this clear on your risk tolerance. Is it low? Is it medium? Is it high? Are you willing and are you at an age where it makes sense to take substantial risks? It's very important to know that at this moment because that is going to inform your decisions about what to invest in how much to save and do you need to create a side hustle or not based on current 
conditions. Number six, diversify your investments. This is always a staple of good financial planning is diversification. It is good to be invested throughout multiple industries. So for example, investing in global funds, investing in domestic funds, and investing throughout different sectors of the market. It is important to diversify your portfolio so that it can withstand the different variations that are going to occur in the market because you, we're not able to predict specifically which sectors of the economy will get hurt the most throughout a recession, but a good diversified portfolio of mutual funds will do a really good job at minimizing your risk by investing you and your money throughout different industries. And number seven, keep your credit score high. This is going to be a hot button topic in the next six months, especially as the individuals who do not take good financial precautions and continue to get hit up with lifestyle inflation, they continue to go on vacations and rack up debt uh, to keep up a lifestyle image. This is something that has the potential to really hurt folks. So I would say this, it is critically important to keep your credit score up because you do not know what is gonna come next in the market. You do know that interest rates are gonna to continue to rise. The Fed has been very clear about that and they have to do that to be able to combat this rampant inflation. Having a good credit score will lower your costs when it comes time to maybe a vehicle, uh, unfortunately breaking down, uh, being in an accident, uh, one of the, the million things that can get you into a pinch, having a good credit score will give you a lot of peace of mind. So it is the thing that I would say there, number one and the most important thing to a credit score is paying your bills on time in terms of the minimum payments and keeping your balances ideally at zero if you do get into a bind and you are not able or or your side hustle is not giving you enough income to be able to keep up with inflation and you do end up using credit cards it is critical that you pay the balances off every single month so that you do not incur fees a recession is a substantial killer of wealth value is lost throughout the market but it is very important to remember that if you do not sell, these things are temporary. Again, let's control what we can control. Put these tips into play now, and six months down the line, if things continue to get worse, you'll be in good shape. And then, as things start to turn a corner, you will continue to be in good shape because you will have already done the heavy lifting to get yourself and your family financially secure. Please do not get caught up in the downward spiral of the news media. Focus on what you can control in your household and you are going to be just fine by implementing these tips. Guys, thank you so much for joining today. If you got value out of this video, go ahead and crush that like button. Go ahead and subscribe for more personal finance and real estate related videos coming in the future. You got this, I'm pulling for you, and I'm gonna be right here. If you have any questions, go ahead, click the video description and send me your questions and we will get them answered on a future video. Guys, thanks so much, take care.